Thank you, Shikha. And uh, <coughs> good evening to everyone. Uh, and thank you very much for inviting me to this um, um, occasion. And my staff <coughs> very kindly put together a speech that I was going to be delivering here. But I'm taking a unconventional route. I am getting rid of this, rid of this speech, and uh, I'll uh, ask you if you have any questions to ask me, uh, because I was told that there was a lot of spirited uh, discussion this morning, this afternoon. So maybe I'll start with uh, a few questions that you have, and maybe I'll try to respond to you. And uh, let's keep it short because I don't want to be in between. Uh, the rewards and the uh, and uh, you so let's uh, let the rewards in the actual evening begin and uh, let me just uh, respond to some of the concerns that you might have uh, about uh, our scheme so who wants to start five questions okay so you keep the count i'll <laughs> Well, at the outset, mm -hmm. I would uh, sincerely thank you for taking questions mm -hmm. and uh, we are very, very, very proud of uh, your government's achievement or uh, mm -hmm. your achievement so far. Mm -hmm. But Aishman Bharat, I am very, very proud uh, to support as an Indian. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't take into account that Indian healthcare system is very, very complex. Mm -hmm. In fact, earlier in the day I was talking about there are five types of healthcare system which caters for the healthcare industry in mm -hmm. India. I'll just mention so that you understand. Mm -hmm. One is medical college hospital where people are treated by medical students. Mm -hmm. One is government hospitals where government doctors are treating the patients. Mm -hmm. One is a neighborhood nursing home. Most of them are owned by one of the doctors, a couple, and uh, they may or may not be NMH accredited. And they cater for the neighborhood people in a different way. Mm -hmm. And uh, one is uh, charitable hospitals like St. Martha, St. something like that, where the government has given free land, so they subsidize the treatment. The last sector is the corporate sector. Mm -hmm. Now, all the five entities cannot treat the patient at the same cost mm -hmm. because of various reasons. For example, in, if you take into my account, I am a founder chairman of a group of hospitals called Cloud9, and I will pay a rent of 30 lakhs per month for one building, which means whether I do anything or not per day, I am incurring one lakh charges. And if I divide by the number of patients I see, there is no way Aishman Bharat I can accept. So I wanted your opinion of one bill fits everybody. How how can we cater? Now, at the same breath, I was just telling my colleagues that uh, we are not looking for extra money from the corporate sector, but there has to be some give and take. I am willing to treat patients at Aishman birth rates, but in return, we should get some sort of tax breaks or recognition or something like that. I just wanted your opinion, sir. Okay, number two, no, because I will not go question by question. I will uh, get a sense of the house here and uh, try to respond all of them together. and I. I promise that I will try to respond all questions, but uh, let uh, them all come together. Okay, number two. Uh, Dr. Bhushan, yeah. uh, you are asking a lot from members of the private sector who effectively carried a lot of the load for the government for healthcare, especially over the last decades, to foot a lower bill. How are you going to help us make our costs come down? Uh, because at the end of the day, I don't see my doctors, nurses, allied health guys willing to take a lower salary just because Ayushman Bharat has rolled up and I clearly don't see in Tamil Nadu my water costs or my electricity costs coming down. So how are you going to help us make our costs come down? Okay. Just, I beg your pardon, sir. Yeah. We just request audience members to keep their questions shorter, please. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Question number three. Mm. Is that all? No. <laughs> that was easy. <clears throat> so, just taking off on what mm. Sam just mentioned, uh, 
recently there was a news story from Kerala where uh, the state of Kerala has joined already the scheme. Uh, but two of our referral public hospitals, the Regional Cancer Center at Trivandrum and the Sri Chitra the Knowledge of Medical Sciences, they said that we can't afford to uh, join the scheme because unless the state subsidizes or gives some allocation and reimbursement. So the dilemma is that we find uh, public sector units shying away from the scheme. Uh, in, in fact, it should be the other way around. So there is a real uh, problem and many of us were really hoping against hope with uh, Madam Sitaram's budget that we were really looking at that allocation mm -hmm. uh, from the interim to what really happened, but the number never changed. So we are in a safe, uh, you know, cash 22 situation. The concept and the idea is wonderful, but we were hoping that uh, in this five year regime, that uh, how do we fund this uh, scheme and how can all of us join hands to make it really a practical, sustainable model long term? Yeah, good evening, sir. I am Dr. Neeraj Tumani. I am the <coughs> medical director at Holy Family Hospital. I come from Mumbai, uh, where most of the hospitals are, you know, charitable hospitals. Uh, there is a certain obligation of charitable hospital. Ten percent you are supposed to keep beds for total free, and ten percent of the beds you are supposed to keep for subsidized patient. Now, Ayushman also. Uh, requires us to keep a 15% uh, if I am not wrong uh, reservation of beds that means uh, I have reserved 35% of my beds already uh, for subsidized or uh, let's say low cost so will it be sustainable uh, you know with other also general category I otherwise also require for you know my middle class and lower class patients who cannot afford uh, in fact we, we are one of the hospitals which is most considered most reasonable in our area. But with only 65% uh, is it possible? Very gracious of you sir mm -hmm. to accept our questions. Thank you for that. Um, my question is more about uh, government programs and how Ayushman Bharat is solving the problem of payments from the government. Um, I believe there is a payment gateway program, um, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, if the cost of doing healthcare um, and the cash flow is restricted, that creates other advanced complex problems when uh, the, you know, the cost itself is low. And if that is not solved, it will create a um, scarcity of funds for anybody to do anything, actually. So how do you think uh, this is going to get, get resolved? <clears throat> All right. Uh, good evening again. And uh, just as a background, this scheme, of course, covering, sorry? One more question. One more question, okay. All right. <laughs> Sorry, sir. Good evening, okay, sir. This is the last one. Yes. Sir, I am Neeta from Godresh Maha Hospital. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, uh, first of all, Raju Gandhi, then Mahatma Phule, and then now we are, doing, we are going to start with Aishwaman Bhadra. Mm -hmm. Actually, these schemes all are okay. But we, our hospital protocol is to do quality health care mm -hmm. to the patients. And you are, um, government is specifying some specified amount. Okay, this, may, this much amount only you have to pay for the patients, you are going to get this. In that amount, it is not possible to provide quality health care for the patients. Then, for that, we need some solutions. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you again. Yeah. And uh, there is a common thread uh, going in all the questions that were raised. <laughs> that was, that how can private sector effectively support our scheme without cutting corners without compromising the quality with the rates that we have. Uh, for that, also we need to understand the background of this uh, scheme. Uh, this scheme is for the 40% poorest people 
uh, in the country and the objective is that these people and many of these people who never had access to quality health services now this scheme is seeking to provide that access to these people so in a way this presents a huge opportunity for uh, the sector not only the uh, kind of uh, audience we have here but in the entire ecosystem whether they are from insurance companies or uh, TPAs, uh, ancillary sectors, pharmaceuticals, devices, IT, uh, of course uh, health sector that uh, in years to come we will have these 500 million new people or uh, even if you think that 50% of them are being serviced now, uh, 250 million new people coming to the market. Uh, of course, uh, I have always maintained in all uh, my discussions that active involvement of private sector will be the key for success of the scheme uh, because if we look at the history last 70 years, although we have invested heavily in public sector, still about 70% of treatment a large amount of treatment in tertiary care is provided by the private sector and one of the objectives of this scheme was to open up this uh, huge capacity in the private sector for the poorest people and I also realized that the private sector will not actively participate unless the rates are viable and uh, the original idea and the philosophy of this scheme was that we will move this whole system right now from high margin, low volume model to a low, low margin and high volume model. Right now, and the first speaker very, uh, very nicely put a framework that we have the five different kind of uh, uh, hospitals and at least if we look at the corporate hospitals, uh, their model is largely based on uh, low volume and high margin. And uh, if you go down the chain, uh, of course, uh, that changes. And uh, we've uh, been implementing the scheme now so far for nine months. And nine months have given us a lot of uh, uh, a lot of experience. And uh, one thing that we've seen is that uh, at least for some of these hospitals, not all five sectors, all five type of hospitals, some of the hospitals actually have been very actively uh, involved in uh, Ishwan Bharat. And just to give you some numbers, uh, in last nine months, we have had about 32 lakh uh, uh, admissions, which is not a small number. And we've had about 8,000 private hospitals uh, which have been paneled with us. Again, that is also not a small number. And uh, we have uh, committed more than 4,000 crores, close to 4,500 crores. And of that commitment, two-thirds, about 3,000 crore, has gone to the private sector. Therefore, uh, I can say that with the all sincerity at my command, that private sector has so far very actively participated in this scheme and uh, they have been part of this uh, initial uh, success that we have uh, with this scheme. But uh, am I happy uh, with this? Uh, am I satisfied? Uh, probably not because I would have thought that maybe there would be even bigger participation from private sector and I can still see the reluctance among certain sections of private sector uh, to be part of the scheme and we are hoping that in the time to come we can overcome that. Now coming to some of the questions whether uh, right now the packages are viable whether they provide enough uh, resources for hospitals to provide uh, quality care. Uh, I must admit that maybe not all packages are viable and we are in the process of looking at them very carefully and what we are finding is that actually many of the packages uh, are slightly generous, they should be maybe reduced and at the same time we find that some packages uh, may be unfairly low and we are looking at them very carefully. Uh, but if a hospital is looking at uh, these packages as a total, as a big package, 
there obviously some packages they'll make money and some packages they'll lose money but overall i have a feeling that if you are providing uh, care based on all the uh, all different uh, mix of uh, health conditions probably overall uh, uh, you might be uh, breaking even but again that's a assumption that we have and we want to further validate that assumption uh, as we go there was also question raised about uh, how can we uh, make sure or help hospitals in reducing costs uh, of course uh, uh, hospital costs uh, uh, consists of many things but in <laughs> some things we are working that we might like to we might uh, help with reducing costs as far as uh, uh, their interaction with pmj is concerned pm ayushman bharat pmj is concerned uh, we will be uh, during the, the course of year uh, having some collective bargaining uh, with the suppliers of devices and uh, uh, implants and also with the pharmaceutical uh, industry where we will try to negotiate uh, the prices of these uh, 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 these things these inputs uh, uh, favorably uh, and uh, i am happy to say that uh, from industry so far we have got very uh, a good response and hopefully uh, we can provide you some uh, better rates for uh, these implants devices uh, pharmaceuticals and other supplies uh, that may help in reducing costs and we are also looking at the system where we can define the cost can be uh, segregated based on devices and processes procedures separately so that uh, uh, we can ensure that as the prices of devices go down uh, we also reduce the packet prices uh, based on that so uh, of course uh, we can't directly help you reduce the prices of your labor cost or your uh, water and uh, power bills but uh, in the process maybe in due course uh, we can work on those issues together with you and with the ministry of finance in terms of the breaks or tax breaks that uh, we might uh, uh what uh, because see uh, those issues are beyond the purview of our ministry or um, nhj but uh, nonetheless since uh, uh, they directly impact on uh, the cost in the budget that we have uh, we might uh, uh, be your partner in uh, discussing and negotiating those things with the other part of the uh, government now there were uh, issues on uh, differential pricing uh by the first speaker that uh, we different uh, um hospitals would have different pricing and we fully understand that and recognize that so while that poses a big problem for us uh that poses a big uh, 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 a layer of complexity for us that how should we determine prices at the national level uh, while we realize that uh, prices across country across different kind of uh, uh, health institutions differ widely uh, for that of course we already have made a some modest beginning where we have said that uh, if your hospital is in metropolitan area you can get a uh, uh, slightly higher rate uh, if your hospital is an abh uh, certified you can get a higher rate and we are also proposing that if your hospital is in some aspirational district which are where it is difficult to you for you to find uh, doctors and uh, uh, health personnel you also get higher rate uh, similarly if your hospital is um, uh, training hospital uh, where you are training uh, doctors or uh, paramedical staff then again you that got get a higher rate and all these uh, increments uh, uh, can be added so it can actually add up to about 40% so 35 to 40% extra if you are doing all of those so but uh, i also understand that this may not be enough and again that is the purpose of uh, the review which uh, we are undertaking and we are undertaking this review with a lot of sincerity and uh, uh, openness and uh, later this month we will be having a meeting and we will also be consulting with the widely uh, with the industry and uh, Uh, other stakeholders on that but again uh, please don't expect a huge change in these rates because uh, uh, there is a trade off between of course providing 
uh, higher rates uh, and uh, sustainability to the scheme. And again, uh, there will be a view that uh, we need to have a greater uh, learning or inputs uh, from the implementation uh, as we go along. And uh, as I mentioned that <coughs> uh, whenever we discuss this issue uh, in the corridors uh, with Ministry of Finance and others, uh, they always come back asking that uh, why do we need to change the rates when uh, two-thirds of your uh, 32 lakh people, more than 20 lakh uh, admissions have come from the private sector. So obviously there is a private sector group uh, which is uh, uh, finding these rates viable and uh, has been part of a scheme. But again, uh, we have to see it very uh, in a more subtle way and find that what kind of support uh, we've got so far and uh, if we have to provide support for uh, tertiary care and more than tertiary care, if, uh, if that kind of support is forthcoming so far. And also we have to see from the future because right now we realize that supply of uh, health services in uh, tier 2, tier 3 cities, rural areas is lacking and whether these rates are sufficient to attract investment in the, from the private sector uh, in these areas and expand supply as, as we go along. So there are many questions here uh, right now but what I can say very, uh, very sincerely is that we fully uh, believe that ro your role in this scheme is uh, critical and we want to make sure that uh, the rates that we offer uh, to you uh, are viable so that uh, you can provide uh, quality services. But at the same time, I also want to urge you and uh, seek, or seek your cooperation uh, in uh, ensuring that uh, if and when the rates are revised or even if they are not revised, you should be uh, part of the scheme and uh, help us from within because if you keep sitting on the uh, fence and wait for the rates to be revised and only when you decide to join, probably that may not work. It will be much better if you are part of the scheme, you experience this uh, uh, implementation of the scheme and provide us feedback and if you think that after joining those rates are not viable and we are not listening to you, uh, then you are always free to leave. But join us, be part of this uh, big movement that uh, Prime Minister Modi has put in place and uh, try to change and evolve the scheme as you go. Because we need some quality players, we need good hospitals who can be role model for other hospitals and uh, expand the services, expand the supply of services uh, for our 50 crore, more than 50 crore people. And uh, we want hospitals like uh, uh, with the have very high ethical standards so that we can also show these hospitals to some of the hospitals that we found who have been uh, part caught uh, in fraud and abuse uh, that uh, this is the kind of uh, role models or this is the kind of uh, hospitals uh, we, we uh, this is the kind of behavior uh, that we expect uh, uh, in the country and I can say while we are very proud of uh, the initial uh, nine months where we have been able to reach out to uh, as I mentioned more than 30 lakh uh, people but we also realize that's a long way to go and uh, it's just a very uh, modest beginning and uh, the scheme is here to stay and uh, we, are, uh, we are hoping that when the scheme is uh, uh, mature we'll have more than two crore uh, new admissions uh, every year. Right now we are on pace to provide about uh, uh, 50 to 60 lakhs uh, per year uh, but uh, the rate which is growing uh, probably we will have 2 crores per year and uh, that 2 crore per year uh, market is there for you to capture and uh, to of course to serve uh, and we I hope that you will be part of this and uh, before I finish I want to just uh, uh, say uh, share with you one uh, African saying which says that uh, if you are going to go a short distance, uh, then uh, you can go alone. And actually, it's much better to go alone uh, if you're going to shoot for short distance. But if you're going to go long distance, then you can't go alone. You have to have been a group of people 
because otherwise uh, it will be difficult for you to survive. And this scheme is not a sprint, it's a marathon. And we just started and we know that if we have to succeed and we have to achieve the vision and promise of the scheme, we need support of a lot of people and we need to be with a lot of people and people like you. And so I urge you to join this scheme uh, with a uh, lot of enthusiasm and uh, make it a success so that we can change the uh, picture of the health sector in the country. Thank you very much and thank you for inviting me again.